I'd like to introduce you to this exciting new Unity for Beginners course, where we'll create a game using Unity and C Sharp over a series of videos. All the software that we'll use, including Unity and VS Code, can be downloaded free of charge. This course is totally free, and you won't need to spend money on the tools that we'll use to create the game. I'll provide you with a comprehensive guide on how to create a game using Unity, and we'll also learn a few things about C Sharp along the way. You don't need to have any prior knowledge of C Sharp or Unity to go through this course. This is a great place to start learning game development and C Sharp. Hi, I'm Gavin Lon. I've been a professional software engineer for over 20 years. I think learning Unity is a great and fun way to learn C Sharp. Unity provides an environment that game developers can leverage to create as well as monetize their games. Virtual three-dimensional immersive environments are without a doubt going to become a big part of our futures. And learning how to control objects through code in three-dimensional space will be an excellent addition to your skill set. So, if you want to learn valuable information about C Sharp and Unity, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing to the channel. And please ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content. Please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, I've included a link to my Buy Me A Coffee webpage below in the description. It will be greatly appreciated. So I've created a prototype for the game that we are going to build. Let me demonstrate what I've created so far so you can get an idea of what you'll learn by going through this Unity for Beginners course. Essentially, the objective of the game is to complete two levels in the shortest possible time. The player's time is measured using a stopwatch that I've programmed for this game using Unity and C Sharp. Level one is slightly easier than level two. So let's start the game. So we first have presented to us an introduction screen. We can press the start button to enter the game. So the player that the user controls is this ball, kind of a sci-fi looking orb. I'll simply refer to this game object as the player. The player is able to see how well the player is doing through the stopwatch time display. The stopwatch only activates when the player enters the level by moving through the force field immediately in front of the player. So when I press the W key on my keyboard, a forward force is applied to the player, handled through a C-sharp script that I've written for the player object. And the player moves through the force field, which activates the stopwatch. So the player must try to get to the end of this level as fast as possible. If the player hits any of these obstacles, the player's energy count is decremented by a value of one. If the player's energy count reaches zero, it's game over and the player didn't make it. Energy cubes randomly appear at random locations in front of the player. The player can gain energy by hitting an energy cube. When an energy cube is hit by the player, the player's energy level is incremented by a value of one. You can see the player's energy level displayed in the top right hand corner of the screen. Once an energy cube is hit, the energy cube is destroyed. I've used Unity's particle system to create an explosion effect for when an energy cube is hit by the player. So to leverage the particle system to create explosions like this will of course be taught at an appropriate point during this course. And of course, what game is complete without having an enemy? So these random red metallic balls will randomly appear at random positions in front of the player and target the player. If an enemy ball hits the player, the player's energy is decremented by a value of one. Remember, if the player's energy level reaches zero, it's game over. It's also game over if the player falls off the ground plane. Great! So here are some of the things you'll learn by going through this Unity for Beginners course. Installing the latest version of Unity and Unity Hub for free. Appropriately setting up the Unity environment. You'll learn basic c -sharp concepts that will be applied during the development of the game to manipulate game objects and components. 
We'll use C Sharp to build intelligence into the system. Like for example, the functionality where enemies can spawn randomly at random locations in front of the player and target the player. You'll learn about Unity's physics engine. A basic example of this is how you can make your game objects abide by the law of gravity through what's known as a rigid body component. You'll learn how you can disable certain physics for game objects. You'll learn how to use collider components to trigger C-sharp events into which we can hook and apply custom code to execute when two game objects collide. For example, when an enemy hits the player, our C-sharp code decrements the player's energy level by a value of one. You'll learn about how to apply components to game objects and how you can manipulate their properties for customization purposes. You'll learn how to create C-sharp scripts and apply them to your game objects or assets. You'll learn how you can configure your code editor of choice within Unity so that you can use the relevant code editor to create and modify your C-sharp scripts. You could, for example, use the Visual Studio IDE for this purpose, but we are going to use VS Code in this course for creating and editing our C-sharp scripts. You'll learn how C-sharp code can hook into certain Unity events through the implementation of the Unity Engine's Mono Behavior base class. You'll program the main camera to follow the player. You'll learn how to spawn enemy objects at random locations in front of the player and program the enemy objects to target the player. You'll learn how to wire up audio clips so that they play when certain events occur during a game session. You'll learn, for example, how sound clips can play from certain positions in three-dimensional space so that, for example, the illusion of sound played at a distance is created. You'll learn about vectors and implement very basic functionality where vector mathematics is employed to control the direction in which certain game objects follow. Don't be put off by this. Vector mathematics may sound scary and complicated, but everything in this course will be explained in a simple way and the mathematics itself will not be all that complex. You'll learn about Unity's particle effects that can be controlled in such a way as to create a variety of types of effects, like for example, the explosion effect. You'll learn how you can add sophisticated textures to your game assets for free. You'll learn how you can replace the default skybox with one more appropriate to your particular game. You'll learn how to create appropriate UI displays, for example, for displaying player health, and in this particular game, a stopwatch display. You'll learn how to create a start menu UI and an end screen UI. You'll learn about prefabs and how to use them so that multiple game assets of the same type can be modified so that the effect of the modification is propagated to all the game assets of the same type. For example, enemy game objects, energy cubes and obstacles will be created as prefabs for this purpose. You'll learn how to include a point light where the point light is used to emit light from a game object. This is used for our energy cubes. You'll learn how to use Unity to create basic animation effects and apply them to game objects. For example, the spinning effect applied to the energy cubes. You'll learn how to preserve the state of data across scenes or levels through the use of scriptable objects. For example, the player's stopwatch time will be preserved after the player completes level one. And the player's stopwatch time will then start from the value recorded after the player completed level one, when the player starts level two. The player's energy level value will also be persisted within the game session across scenes or levels. So I'm through dishing out what's beginning to sound a bit like a word salad. But the bottom line is, if you follow this course, you'll learn a tremendous amount about C Sharp and Unity. This is a very beginner friendly course. The course will be designed to be entertaining, enjoyable and comprehensive. In the next video, we'll focus on installing Unity and Unity Hub and also setting up the Unity environment. And we'll also discuss the basics of Unity. We can then get started developing our game. So please join me in the follow up videos where we'll build a game using Unity and C Sharp. This is a great place to start learning game development and C Sharp. This course can put you on track to becoming a game developer. So if you want to learn Unity and C Sharp, please hit the like button. Please consider subscribing and please ring the bell so that you'll be notified of when the parts of this course are released. 
Please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from their content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, I've included a link to my Buy Me A Coffee webpage below in the description. It of course will be greatly appreciated. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you and take care.